Hey guys, today we'll speak about the metabolism of fructose and galactose. So we'll start with fructose. It is another kind of simple sugar and the major source um, is the disaccharide sucrose, which when cleaved in the intestine gives us fructose and glucose. It is also found in fruits and honey. In contrast to glucose, it does not promote the secretion of insulin. Alright, so for fructose to enter the pathways of intermediary metabolism, it must first be phosphorylated, and this can be accomplished by either hexokinase or fructokinase. Now, hexokinase phosphorylates glucose in most cells of the body. However, it has a low affinity for fructose. So fructokinase provides the primary mechanism for fructose phosphorylation. It is found in the liver, which possesses most of the dietary fructose, kidney and the small intestinal mucosa, converting fructose to fructose 1-phosphate. Fructose 1-phosphate is not phosphorylated to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate as in glycolysis, but it is cleaved by an enzyme. Now we have aldolase, which has three subtypes, A, B and C. We are interested in B, which is found in the liver, and uh, C is found in the brain, A is found in most tissues. Now this aldolase B is also called fructose 1-phosphate aldolase, and it converts it to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde. But only aldolase B will cleave fructose 1-phosphate into these two products which can directly enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis. The rate of fructose metabolism is more rapid than that of glucose because the triosis formed from fructose 1-phosphate, they bypass the phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme reaction which is the major rate limiting step in glycolysis because there is no production of um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, fructose can also be got from mannose. So hexokinase phosphorylates mannose, producing mannose 6-phosphate, which in turn is reversibly isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate by phosphomannose isomerase. Aldose reductase reduces glucose, producing sorbitol. In cells of the liver, ovaries, and seminal vesicles, there is a second enzyme, sorbitol dehydrogenase, which can oxidize the sorbitol to produce fructose. The benefit of sperm cells uh, is that they can use fructose as a major carbohydrate energy source. All right, a deficiency of one of the key enzymes required for the entry of fructose into intermediary and metabolic pathways can result in either a benign condition as a result of fructokinase deficiency, which is known as essential fructoseurea, or a severe disturbance of liver and kidney metabolism as a result of aldolase B deficiency, known as hereditary fructose intolerance, or simply as HFI. The first symptoms of HFI appear when a baby is weaned from milk and begins to be fed food containing sucrose or fructose. Now, fructose 1-phosphate accumulates due to deficiency, resulting in a drop in the level of inorganic phosphate and therefore AMP is degraded, causing hyperuricemia and lactic acidosis. The kidney function may also be affected. Diagnosis is made on the basis of fructose in the urine, enzyme assay or by DNA-based testing. As you can see, it is a dangerous condition. Treatment is removing fructose and sucrose from the diet. Essential fructose urea is just a lack of fructokinase, which is benign, and fructose accumulates in the urine. Alright, moving on to another simple sugar, galactose. Uh, the major dietary source is lactose, which is obtained from milk and milk products. Like fructose, the entry of galactose into the cells is not insulin dependent and like fructose, it must be phosphorylated before it can be further metabolized. Most tissues have a specific enzyme for this purpose. Galactokinase is the one which produces galactose 1-phosphate. It cannot enter the glycolytic pathway unless it is first converted to UDP galactose. This occurs in an exchange reaction in which UDP glucose 
reacts with galactose 1-phosphate producing UDP, galactose and glucose 1-phosphate. So it's an exchange reaction. Now the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase known as GALT, galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. Okay, disorder. GALT is deficient in individuals with classic galactosemia. In this disorder, galactose 1-phosphate and therefore galactose accumulate in cells. All right, starting with classic galactosemia, so it is a gold deficiency, can cause galactosemia, galactosuria, vomiting, diarrhea, and jaundice. Moving on to galactokinase deficiency, it is rare, also causes galactosemia and galactosuria. Elevated levels can cause cataracts. And aldose reductase is physiologically unimportant unless uh, it causes galactosemia, causing cataracts. That is it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next one. We are done with carbohydrates. Next one will be on lipids. Bye!